This CNE hosted webinar covers Banner Engineering's LE series laser measurement sensors and the modular TL70 tower light. Your presenter today is Steve Westfall, Senior Application Engineer at Banner Engineering. Let's join the webinar already in progress. With both analog and discrete outputs. Waiting for the uh, thing to change. There we go. Uh, the fact that it's able to measure accurately off of so much of surfaces uh, makes it a great product for reliable solutions. Some of the nice features include a huge LCD display, a linear array imager for excellent response at the closer distances, a laser emitter, an input wire that is not only used for remote teach, but a variety of functions within the menu to choose from uh, that I'll show you in a minute. It has an analog output and a discrete output that both can independently be set up to operate together with their own limits. It's described as easy to set up and operates with two lines of display. One display showing the distance from the target, a second display with an analog output value for that displayed distance. And here I'm showing you what it looks like in the run mode as well as uh, the menu uh, system where you're going in and making some changes to some of those menus. It will measure and display the range from about 4 inches to just under 40 inches. It's very economical for the amount of delivered accuracy you get. For 100 to 600 millimeters, it has an accuracy of plus or minus 2 millimeters where the benefits of the linear array is, is most obvious. Beyond 600 millimeters, all the way up to one meter, the uh, the accuracy will follow to a plus and minus 10 millimeters at that 1,000 millimeter distance. It's very repeatable across the shiny surfaces or the dull surfaces, regardless of color. It does have that class two laser with a small spot size to aid in alignment and positioning. What it is not is a contrast sensor. When you wish to teach it, with a two-point teach, for instance, it is not teachable between a light object and a dark object because it will not detect any differences in those two surfaces if they are positioned at the same distance away from the sensor. On the face of the sensor, you can use the available buttons to set up and teach the sensor or use the input wire as a remote teach, as an example and it can just be entered with multiple pulses to get you from one menu to the next. Uh, there is an analog output indicator that will light when the taut distance representing 4 to 20 milliamps or 0 to 10 volts depending on the model. Also there is a discrete output indicator corresponding to the discrete output that can be set up to be a, PA, a PNP or an NPN. Uh, here's a few of the uh, specifications. Um, it is a 12 to 30 volt supply voltage. Um, again, the analog output 4 to 20 or 0 to 10 volt, uh, depending on the model. There you see the analog resolution. It's IP67, NEMA 6. The nice thing I found about this is that it's got a lot of horsepower packed into this thing. There's a lot of features that you can go through in terms of these menus. In fact, there's seven different menus that you can go through. I'm going to take each one as it goes here. The first one on the analog menu, you can change the analog output settings. The factory setting, in fact, is already set up for you right out of the box. So it will already represent a 4 to 20 milliamp covering the entire range of 100 millimeters to, to one meter. So amongst these analog settings, you can select the two-point teach. And uh, that's very similar to what we have on a lot of sensors out there. Uh, you're basically just choosing two points. You introduce the, uh, the uh, distance for the four milliamp, and you introduce a distance for the 20 milliamp. It also has a midpoint window teach, which basically will take the midpoint of the range, and from there you can separate and expand the window, a plus or minus from that center point. 
Uh, as you see here, the window size 10 millimeters to 800 millimeters is the acceptable size of window that you can create. The default is going to sit there at that 50 millimeter uh, window, and you can expand or contract from that point. Uh, the manual adjust for 4 milliamps here is where you can actually set up a specific distance that you want to represent 0 volts or 4 milliamps. Uh, also, the manual adjust, you can now set up a certain distance that you want to represent for the, uh, the higher end of the, uh, of the uh, analog output. Also, you can set the slope as a positive or a negative, as you see here. You can have it so it's represented at a closer distance that it starts at 20 milliamps and goes down to uh, 4 milliamps, or you can uh, leave it as it default-wise as it normally is, which is 4 to 20, starting with a low end going up higher as you go. Also, you can set up a uh, what you want for your signal if there's a loss of signal. If for some reason you are out of range, the display can be set up to represent a 3.5 milliamp reading, a 20.5 milliamp reading, or you can just hold it on the signal that it last had prior to going out of range. Now, these are the discrete settings. So there's a menu for discrete settings. Again, you have a two-point teach, as well as that midpoint teach. And in this case, since it's not an analog signal, you're basically just giving yourself the window that you want to represent for the signal to go from a low state to a high state and back down to a low state as you go beyond that distance that you've taught. Also, you can manually adjust a set point one or set point two, just like we could on the prior menu, where you can set for the input to go high at a certain distance. Uh, uh, if you want to just have one set point and just basically uh, create a, a, a point where you go high, that can be set up that way. Now, these mode settings in the discrete menu are rather nice, where, you, again, you can set it up for a window mode where you can have the uh, signal go from a low to a high, or it can be set differently where you have a window that goes from a high, and now once within this, within, it's within this window, it'll go to a low signal and then back up to high when you've gone beyond that set point. Or you can just have it in a switch mode where it will simply drop low in this representation here once it has gone beyond a certain distance and stay there. Or you can go the other way, where after it reaches a certain distance, it will basically go high. Um, also, there's a setting for the health mode. Um, and this health mode means that the output will be on when in range, just another signal that you can have on this discrete output. If you didn't want to use it for switching, it can basically represent a health mode that is uh, on basically when everything's running. Or it can be set up as an alarm mode, where in this case, it actually will be off as long as it's in range. Once you go out of range from the settings that you made, it will basically turn on an output saying that you've got an alarm. This is uh, extending the discrete settings again. You can also set it up for a timing option here. Uh, where you have the ability to set it from one millisecond up to a maximum of 900 and, or 9,999 milliseconds for an off delay, or it could be an off one-shot timer, an on delay, or an on one-shot timer. You have those selections to choose what you want to do with that output. Also on the discrete menu, you'll find a polarity setting. So here is where you're setting it up from a default of PNP, to an NPN if you wish to have that be your discrete output. Next, there's an input menu. And this is using that input wire, the gray wire that's coming in. Um, it typically may be used for this teach function. And uh, if you're not going to use a remote teach, then it can be used for other things. You can turn on your laser just by this input. Uh, you can turn it on and off uh, according to whatever you want to bring into that wire. It can also be used for some trigger advanced measurement settings, and we're going to go through what those trigger settings are in a bit. Or it can be used as a sync master, sync slave. What is that? Uh, that's actually going to be, I'll, I'll show you a slide that follows that will uh, explain what that is. Um, or you can basically uh, disable it where the remote input is no longer usable. 
Now this sync master and slave, you can connect two LE lasers together in a single sensing operation and, uh, excuse me, there we go. I'm going to get rid of this here. I can pull that over so I can see the rest of my screen. There we go. Um, the sensors, uh, one sensor can be the master and one can be the slave. In this mode, the sensors are going to alternate taking measurements. So as a result, the response speed is going to double. But in those settings I had showed you prior, you can set one up to be the master using this input wire. And you can set the second one up to be the slave. It basically means you're going to connect these two gray wires together. And I've got a uh, picture here that shows two of them being used to measure the profile of this box as it's going through here. So this is a, a great way to utilize it in a master-slave type of a setup. Now there's a measure menu that's also uh, accessible here. And within this measure menu, you'll have a choice of changing the speed. And as you see here, the default for the response time is going to be 5 milliseconds. You can make it faster to 2 milliseconds or extend it out to 15 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds. You are going to get a bit more accuracy if you allow more time for things to happen. So, But just the fact that it can get down to 2 milliseconds uh, makes it a very fast sensing option here. Also, you can use it to trigger. And in this case, it's going to be uh, having the ability to, to uh, calculate when the trigger event is detected on a remote input. Now that remote input, you can have it be a, uh, you know, measure it as a sample. You can have a trigger coming in that says at a current distance at the time of the trigger event, you're going to have a certain display. Or it can display, or it can display an average distance since the last trigger or a maximum distance since the last trigger, a minimum distance since the last trigger, or a range, a difference between the max and minimum since the last trigger. So under this trigger option, you're going to have some information that's available that's coming in there. Here is the display menu. The display menu is where you can set your display units to millimeters or inches. Uh, the orientation you can change within the menu so that if you happen to have this position so it's easier to read if you invert the whole display, you have that choice of making that happen. And you can set it up to have a, uh, a sleep mode. And it can either be disabled or you can set it up for these settings you see here, 1 minute, 5 minute, 15 minutes, or 60 minutes. The last two menus, the first one is an information menu, and that's basically where you're going to be able to go in and just visually see what is the model number, what's the part number, uh, some of the information on the serial numbers and the versions of the uh, firmware internally. Also, a reset menu where at the very bottom of all your, your the very bottom of all your reset choices, you can choose to reset it back to factory default settings or not. The LE550, some of the main features in this is that it's, got, uh, it's going to have that 100 to 1,000 millimeter range. The spot size is going to be a 2.5 millimeter by 6 millimeter at 1 meter range. Uh, visible beam for easy setup and alignment. Uh, list pricing is going to be at the $545 mark, just for list price again. But in the last month, we've introduced its counterpart. It's another uh, laser measurement sensor just like the 550 called the LE250. And this is beginning to be a family of ours where in the future we will extend that again to some more models of varying uh, specifications. But internally, everything works the same as far as setting up all those different menus. The big difference, uh, the differentiators from that LE550 is the fact that it's used for some shorter ranges. And our resolution is much better at 0.2 millimeter resolution at 400 meters. But the range is going to be the, range is going to be the um, 100 millimeter to only 400 millimeters. But you do have a lot better accuracy and resolution at this point. A smaller beam size, 
to pick up those smaller features that you might be trying to detect. Superior performance in the color transition, a finer display resolution, and of course with that there's going to be some extra cost with the, uh, the uh, shorter range having more uh, ability there. Now it's got the same uh, features across the whole LE series of sensors, whether it's the 550 or the 250. The LCD display is very intuitive in the way that you can set it up and monitor it. Of course, that linear array is uh, very, very reliable for those measurements within the target uh, that you've chosen. Whether it's a shiny metal or a black rubber, it does not matter. Um, analog and discrete outputs, both independently running at the same time and giving you information on whatever set it up here. Hey, Steve, I've got a question. Uh, sure. Your question is, is one meter or a thousand millimeters the longest range available? It is, at least in this family. Um, we've got a lot of different products that go much further, but at this point, 1,000 millimeters is the longest you can go with any of the L-Gage LE series. And, yep. and those other products, what kind of ranges and what kind of products are we talking? Good. I've got a slide here that's going to show all of the families of these laser displays. Oh, perfect. Sensors, so you, uh, good timing. I think it's coming up here rather soon. Um, the input modes, again, delay timers and other advanced features it is a, a nice way to get some uh, things done here. Here is what you were just talking about, Chris. And the introduction of the LE550 and the 250 fit into a real nice space here where we were missing that uh, range that could get out to one mil or out to 1,000 millimeters here. Uh, we also have just to answer your question, for longer ranges, we're looking at the LT3 and the LT7, which are time of flight lasers. But with those, obviously, you can get, uh, uh, this is the resolution that we're showing you at, showing you here at the maximum range. And here is the ranges down below. So the LT7, for instance, can get out to 10 meters. Um, and even on the other end, if you're getting down into some smaller targets where you really need some accuracy, we've got some products that obviously have great resolution and uh, you won't be able to get the the range that you're looking for uh, for long distances but that's that kind of comes with the uh, comes with the product here if you want the accuracy it's probably not going to give you much range Is that hopefully that answers the question on at least some other products for uh, other ranges and resolutions here okay so in in looking at the way that they're possibly ordered, here is the, the scheme for setting up a specific model number. And as you see here, uh, for instance, on the LE 550, you're, you're choosing it to either be a model with 4 to 20 milliamp analog or 0 to 10. And then on the connectors itself, there's going to either be a, uh, an integral cable that's 2 meters long, or you might have a rotatable M12 Euro and this is what we're talking about. The very end of this is something that can rotate in case it makes it for a very uh, specific type of mount where you need that variation in the, uh, the angle that you're coming off of there. Or it can be ordered with a QP on the end, which is just a, a Euro pigtail. And I believe that's about one foot long or six inches. I can't recall. But, uh, or it might be that you want an integral cable, but we need that extended length out to nine meters. And here are the different model numbers so far. Mounting options. There's uh, your standard brackets. The nice thing is you can mount your sensor on the inside of the angle or on the outside, whatever uh, seems to be the best orientation. There are some slotted uh, sections in here, so it can be served as a, uh, to tilt it in a certain angle. Uh, if you need something that's going to protect it in those rugged environments, this model here, the SMB LEU, is... Uh, very rugged. It's going to surround the whole thing. There's even talk of putting in some sort of a protective window here, but so far that hasn't transpired. But it would be in something of this fashion if you're really trying to get the maximum protection. Or in this model here, it's mountable with this little bar clamp where the, uh, the ability to flex it in all different directions is available by this orbiting connection right here. So that's uh, the SMB LEFA. Cord sets are going to be what we've typically used for a number of our products. It's just your 5-pin 
Euro style or M12 style, uh, which does have a shield within. And uh, the gray wire, again, may or may not be used. It's for your input. Otherwise, you're going to have the power uh, coming in as well as the, the outputs for discrete and analog. Application-wise, they do fit into a nice uh, way of doing what you're seeing here. In the automotive groups, we're able to pick, uh, uh, be able to detect some of these weld nuts or, as I'm showing here, a part in place before the next operation. You might want to have what I'm displaying here, which is making sure that you have a motor block, in this case, uh, located in the right location. Um, so using that displacement, you can get some very accurate readings on where things are at the time. Or if this is on the end of a robot, uh, very usable in, in those pick and place type of applications as well. How about in this case where we have some sheet metal roll diameter? Very shiny object could serve as a problem with some sensors, but this is very accurate at getting the uh, reflection back and being able to measure the diameter as it uh, increases or decreases. Uh, for packaging, cartons, box stack, you can detect when you're at a certain level of, uh, of depth here as far as the number of boxes in this case that are stacked up. Another application might be the profiling we've already talked about, but at least with these two sensors hooked together, again, the response time is going to double, but it's a nice way of, of, uh, of getting some accurate measurements on what's in front of it, and regardless of color, color or texture, it's going to give you some very consistent readings there. Down here at the textile roll diameter, very rough surface, uh, does not have a problem with this, is being able to pick up a lot of different types of textures, um, regardless of the, uh, the surface texture or the color. Also, very good at detecting at certain angles. It doesn't have to be directly on the, uh, on the material it's sensing. As this expands and grows, you're going to be able at an angle to get some accurate readings to set up for your analog output. Also, it's great for the fact that uh, if you were using some web control and were using ultrasonics, ultrasonic sensors do work well, but along with that you have the the problem sometimes of some uh, air drifts and things that are moving in the area that can disrupt the accuracy on those uh, ultrasonic type sensors. This makes for a real nice way of detecting uh, your web control or looking at, in this case, the diameter again of the roll. In that type of material, whether it's looking at the shiny side or the opposite side, you're going to get the same accuracy on that uh, sensor. That's very good. We've got some uh, we've got some extra uh, products. I just want to show you. If you weren't aware, we have amongst our tower light family. There's been the recent introduction of the TL70. The TL70, as you see here, in all these different formats, it can either be a single color or up to five different colors with a uh, alarm at the top. The nice thing about the TL70s is, is the fact that it is going to be modular. Um, you can build these as you go, up to five colors with one audible, possibly in one device. Uh, these segments serve as a nice uh, way of getting the color you want. But in the off state, they're always at that nice dull gray color, so there's no chance of any light on the other side for merely causing any false indications. So. Very rugged IP, IP65 housings, um, easy to configure and assemble. So they are, they can be available in either a pre-assembled version or hey, Steve. I do have another question. Modular inputs themselves. Hey Steve, the question is: Absolutely. What are the effects of dust, humidity, fog, etc.? Are these for indoor use? These here are for indoor use. Uh, they are, the brightness of these, they use two rows of segments here. It's, it's uh, very, very bright. It will blow through quite a bit of uh, the dust and fog. And they are sealed up, at least for IP65, so you can't really submerge them in anything uh, water-wise. But they are going to uh, be quite bright to the point where uh, they will blow through quite a bit of that environment. Um, what we have is obviously the available colors that you can choose in any array you want, and it's just going to be a matter of where you position each one of these segments. 
Uh, there's also some uh, uh, some uh, settings that you can set for the light itself. You can either have it on solid, or it can be at a 1.5 hertz rate. You can be flashing, or double that at 3 hertz flashing rate. Uh, that's something that you can set within the dip switches of this, and I'll show you where that's at. Even on the uh, audible section that you have, you can set that up to either be one of these four types of tones, a pulse tone, chirp, siren, or continuous. There's a nice little slide bar here which will open up the orifice to be able to allow you to adjust the volume for what you want there. But 92 dB is typical for this one here uh, at a distance of one meter. Very rugged housings, they come in styles where if it's not black, it could be gray. Um, come with a two-meter cable, uh, pigtails, integral Euro M12, or you can just go right into the terminal block itself and uh, wire it up in that fashion. Here's the base. So the first part would be a base. And again, you can order these assembled already, or you can take them apart and rearrange the colors to what you want. These, can, uh, these individual pods can be ordered separately with the model number scheme here you see. Uh, the base itself can be where you determine what type of connection am I going to have on my base and what color is this going to be. But internally, if you had five of these and an alarm, for instance, inside each one of these there is the dip switches available so you can set it up to represent in order, where does it belong? If it's the very first one that's right above the base, I would set dip switch one on. If it's the second one, I will set its dip switches so that number two is on. And as you see here accordingly, you can have these set up to represent where they fit. Then on the actual uh, uh, dip switch seven and eight is where you set what kind of flash rate do I want? Do I want it on solid? I would leave them in the default mode, which is off. Otherwise, setting them up accordingly, whatever you want for that flash rate. Hey, Steve, I've got another question on the uh, 550 sensor. And the question okay. is, can it be used with a barrier relay? So I'm assuming that is for use in an IS area, intrinsically safe area. Can that be used with a barrier relay? It doesn't have the rating for that. Um, so I'd have to say at this point, uh, no. Is there going to be something down the line? We have talked about, about having the uh, intrinsically safe type of components that are going to be eventually uh, ready to roll here. But right now, it is not uh, to be used or does not have any rating to where it can be used in that type of explosive environment. Thank, thank you. But I can get you some more information uh, on, on what might be coming available or when it's going to be available. Uh, just uh, I know it's not real immediate uh, at this point, but it has been discussed as far as uh, future releases. Thanks. Um, in the section for the audio alarm, here again, uh, the dip switches that are available, you'll obviously not have any use of the first six switches, but the last one, seven and eight, is where you're going to set it up for the type of tone. It's always going to be on the top, obviously of your setup, but you can set it up whatever type of uh, audio tone that you wish. If it is the model that has the built-in terminal block, uh, that is what is going to be residing inside of this uh, base unit, and it also has the dip switches on that. Now here's uh, alignment-wise and assembly-wise how easy it would be to take one apart and put it back together. There's basically some alignment arrows where you turn it clockwise or counterclockwise to release it. Uh, once you have it lined up, you turn it clockwise and line up the indicators here so that this is going to move into the section where it's lined up from the top to bottom. There'll be some notches there to uh, look for. Just uh, list pricing again on the base unit as well as uh, or this is the modular segments actually, whether it's the base unit or the LEDs or the audible, or pre-assembled units uh, depending on the color. And it doesn't matter what color arrangement you have here, it's the uh, number of colors that are uh, priced accordingly here. 
model number wise then um, for a pre-assembled you could enter everything you need in one model number and uh, hopefully that's going to be something we're going to soon have on our website where you can figure you can configure your own model that you want and, and have a model number at the end of that that event uh, these are some of the mounting bracket accessories that will be available or are available for this. Uh, I think presently this one here is shortly, uh, it, it's the one that's lagging behind. We are waiting for something to be completed, but within a week, week and a half, I've been told this will now be available. And that's the unit that you'd screw onto the base here to accommodate the standoff pipes and that type of thing. Um, this is new, this SAFFB12, where it is something that you can set uh, for whatever angle off of the uh, mounting base that you want to set this. Cabling, uh, again, uh, the standard cables for the the 5-pin M12. Or uh, you might, or if depending on the model now, if you have, if you have more than, I believe it's three uh, colors, then you will be going to an 8-pin M12 to accommodate the extra wires needed to turn on those colors. So here's the, it is four obviously, uh, the, the five pin you're bringing in the com and then you're going to turn on the positive voltage or whatever is going to uh, uh, deliver to that color that you have. So beyond four colors then you will be using the eight pin. So it's a, it's a big addition to our current family. Uh, much bigger. It's it's going to be real obvious on the uh, the brightness that we have within this compared to the the TL50 that we've introduced for uh, and had out in the field for quite a while now. Um, these again are not something you can take apart. Uh, this is the first entry level of the tower family that uh, you can actually modularly take it apart and set it up for what, for the colors that you want. There's a uh, some cell sheets and some quick start guides as well as the manual here that will uh, help out for the instructions and how to set these up. This will coming very soon. We'll be able to have that tower light configurator uh, on our website. Already there exists the TL50, uh, but uh, soon this will be available for the TL70 as well. So in summary, uh, real bright. 70 millimeter LED modular tower light, uh, up to five colors and one audible, four audible tones to choose from. Um, we've kind of already talked about these other things, but it's a real nice uh, setup for that larger type of visibility that you might need. Also, just to finish up here, I want to talk about the K90. It's very similar in, to our K50s and K30s in the past, but it's just very, very bright. Again, there's uh, more LEDs in there, obviously, for uh, the times when you need to have something a lot brighter that's able to be seen from a larger uh, distance. 30 millimeter base is still there. It's IP67 rated, uh, but it does have that large 90 millimeter dome diameter on the top. Lots of colors to choose from, five different colors here. Uh, one color activated at a time, so that will be uh, um, it'll include a flashing input wire uh, that you can trigger if you do want this to flash at times. All right, so it will be uh, literature-wise. You've got some literature numbers here where it can be a simple deal where you have one color activated at a time with the ability to set it up for a certain flash input or the K90 TLs are going to be available again in two to five colors, but with this model you can alternate between colors uh, at a rate of one hertz. So if you wanted to flash yellow then red, yellow then red, you can have that set up to do that inside these. Any questions on that? I don't see any right now, Steve. I really appreciate you joining us this morning to talk a little bit more about both the Banner Laser products and the TL70 that's rolled out. I had an opportunity to play with the TL70 the other day, and I found that the dip switches for configuring, especially the audible horn, were kind of nice because I matched up its I.O. pattern with my red light, and so then I saved an I.O. point. I didn't have to send a separate I.O. signal to the device 
for both my horn and my red light, just that single input to the device caused both to come on. Nice. Good. Yeah. Good. Steve, thanks so much for joining us today. We're looking forward to you joining us next month uh, for a little dive into the safety controllers from Banner. Thanks, yep, everybody, for attending, and have yourself a good rest of the day.